This is the official audiobook of Dash and Dot's Wild Ride, the first ever 2D animated film based on the OG PBS kids' mascots Dash and Dot coming soon from Sharpness Night Studios and Brody Moss Toons. Anderson Enjoy and his four-year-old little sister Dot Anderson live in the suburbs with their parents, Dennis and Denise, where they go along with their usual lives. On the last day of school, Dennis and Denise drop off their children at school and bid farewell to them as Dash and Dot go inside the school to learn and play with their friends. After school ends, Dash and Dot stand outside the school waiting for their parents to pick them up, but they never show up even after a few hours have passed. Dot gradually grows impatient at their parents' absence, before Dash suggests that they take the path back home by walking, which Dot begrudgingly agrees to. Once the two kids manage to make it home by night, they find the house empty with no one in sight and search all over the house to find any traces of their parents, but to no avail. Growing increasingly devastated, Dot cries out for their parents and then breaks down in tears. So Dash comforts her and assures Dot that they will find them soon as he allows her to sleep in his bed to make her feel better. The next morning, Dash and Dot try to theorize guesses on how their parents could have disappeared, but none of them are valid. Desperate to seek help, Dash and Dot produce several missing posters of their parents and plaster them all over the neighborhood, but nobody is able to recount the last thing that happened to Dennis and Denise. Walking back home, Dash and Dot almost lose hope until the former steps on something on the floor and picks it up, revealing that it is Denise's necklace. As Dash questions where their parents might have gone, Dot then finds something underneath the couch, takes it out, and gives it to the former. To their shock, it is an anonymous note demanding a ransom of $5,000, which Dash takes as the second clue to their parents' disappearance and concludes that they haven't just disappeared, they've been kidnapped. Deciding that there's only one thing left to do, Dash announces that he and Dot will get out there and search for their parents, so he prepares a backpack, fills it with supplies that might help him and Dot, and leads his little However, sister out of the house they make to their way their into adventure. the street. Dash and Dot come upon a heavy traffic jam on the highway that seems to take forever. As Dot ponders about what they are going to do now, a determined Dash walks around in a circle trying to think, and when he notices a nearby streetlight, he gets an idea. He climbs the street light, looks down at the long line of vehicles and jumps down from the pole, successfully landing on top of a car. He then helps Dot up onto the top of the car, but just as they are about to make their way across the street through the top of another, the traffic light suddenly flashes green and all of the vehicles start moving abruptly with the two kids on top of the car they were on. Jumping from vehicle to vehicle with Dash, Dot narrowly loses her footing and almost falls to the road below before Dash catches her, after which they finally get back down to the ground and keep moving. Meanwhile, the culprit responsible for the disappearance of Dennis and Denise is revealed to be a kidnapper named Mason, who has kept them bound and gagged in his hideout. He speaks cordially in a mocking way to them before showing his true tone and demanding $5,000, which Dennis and Denise vehemently refuse to. Continuing their journey across the town, Dash and Dot eventually come upon their grandparents, Duncan and Donnell, who assume that they've run away from home and allow them to stay with them. As Donnell makes their grandchildren feel cozy, Dash tells her and Duncan that the real reason they've been wandering alone is that their parents have been kidnapped and they've left home to search for them. Having flashbacks of yesterday, Dot starts to feel sad again, so Donald shares with her granddaughter an experience she had as a child, where she thinks her parents have disappeared and left her distraught until they returned home. After some motivation from their grandparents, Dash and Dot eventually thank them and leave their house to resume their adventure. After walking some more, Dot eventually tires out and starts complaining about having to walk any longer, so Dash, noticing that he and his sister had just passed by the junkyard, decides to lead her there so that they can find a more efficient way of traveling. 
They managed to construct a makeshift car out of a wagon, some old car parts, and an engine, and take it out for a test drive before driving enjoying it enjoying the ride a little too much, starts fighting with Dash over the steering wheel, causing them to go careening out of control and crash into a forest, wrecking their vehicle in the process. Realizing that Dot has ruined their chance of getting closer to where their parents are kept hostage at, Dash loses his temper and goes on a long tirade towards her, where she responds by backtalking to Dash. After a hostile and aggressive argument between the two ensues, Dash ends the argument by disowning Dot, telling her that she is not his sister anymore, and walks away to find their parents himself, leaving a devastated and guilt-stricken Dot behind as it starts raining. As he goes on his way, though, Dash takes out a picture of him, Dot and their parents out from his backpack, and looks at it with vague reconsideration before putting it back inside and going along. Meanwhile, Dot, who is struggling to survive in the rain by taking refuge underneath a tree, starts to feel anxious about the woodland creatures lurking about before a bear suddenly comes out of nowhere and starts chasing her. Dash hears her screams for help in the distance, has a change of heart and rushes back to save his sister. Before the bear can kill Dot, Dash jumps on the bear and starts hitting it, giving Dot a chance to escape. Dash is eventually pinned down by the bear and is about to be, killed by it before it is suddenly stopped by Dot tossing stones and rocks at it. After the beer flees in response to Dot yelling boldly at it, Dash thanks his sister for saving his life, with Dot like Wissa returning the favor. Dash then apologizes to Dot for his earlier behavior and reconciles with her before remembering that it is raining and they are still lost in the forest, so they decide to look for shelter. They eventually come upon an abandoned cabin and stay in it for the night before going to sleep, at which point the rain finally stops. The next morning, Dash and Dot wake up and walk through the forest until they come upon a road, but still have no idea how to get back to the city. Just then, they spot a pickup truck driving in the distance and stick out their thumbs, catching the attention of its southern-accented driver, who then offers to pick up the two kids and drive them back into the city. As Dash and Dot pass the time by playing a game of I Spy, the driver finally arrives at the city, and after disembarking now the truck, the city, they thank him. Dash and Dot on. trudge along some more, pondering on where exactly their parents are until they hear some screaming coming from a nearby abandoned one-story building, so they make their way to said building to investigate. After entering the building, Dash and Dot find, much to their shock, their parents bound and gagged on chairs. Dennis and Denise are likewise just as shocked at the fact that their children have had the strength to go on their own and find them. And when Denise asks what Dash and Dot are doing here, the former says that they have no time to explain as he and Dot set to work untying their parents. However, Mason comes in to see the two kids trying to free his victims and tries to stop them, so Dash and Dot run around trying to evade him. During this, they manage to get the better of the kidnapper in somewhat comical ways, such as Dash tripping him over with his leg and Dot kicking his shins, all while their parents watch in shock. Eventually, Dash manages to trick Mason into falling into the basement and pins the door down as he instructs Dot to untie their parents. Dot initially struggles to do so before finally succeeding and is rewarded with a hug from Denise. Unable to hold the basement door down any longer, Dash calls out to his father to hand him a chair, which Dennis obliges to, and weighs the door down with it before escaping Mason's hideout with his family. Outside, Dash, Dot, and their parents happily exchange a brief celebration over their reunion, but they hear Mason, who has managed to escape from the basement, coming after them and quickly make a run for it, not wanting to lose his chance of getting the ransom, Mason hops into his van and drives after the kids and parents. Having boarded a bus with his family, Dennis thinks that they are safe now until they see Mason in his van driving next to the bus. 
Mason deliberately bumps the bus with his van, causing the passengers inside to tremble and the driver to almost lose control of his vehicle. So, Dash and Dot, after convincing Dennis and Denise to stay in the bus out of fear that Mason might kidnap them again, leap out of the bus and into Mason's van, where they gang up on him out of vengeance for abducting their parents. Eventually, the van is heading towards a river. Seeing this, Mason quickly jumps out and onto the ground, saving himself. But Dash and Dot are unable to react in time Inside as the van plunges into rid the river. Of Dash and Dot, Mason walks away in stride, only to come face to face with the kids. Angry parents. Before he can flee, Denise knocks Mason unconscious by hitting him across the face hard with her slipper, as revenge for kidnapping her and Dennis, but then she and Dennis notice the van in the river and watch, as it sinks to the surface below.